Hey everybody, Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. How's everyone doing? Today's Friday, December 24th, 2021. Christmas Eve for, for many of you. I uh, thought I'd make this video one day early. Markets are closed today, December 24th. I typically do these on Saturday, we do our Saturday synopsis. So this is the Friday version of the Saturday synopsis. Getting it in a day early while the markets are closed. Don't want to bombard you all on Saturday Christmas with a video. So I thought I'd do it a day early. So let's jump in. Let's talk about what we do. I look at the charts. We do technical analysis here on the Saturday synopsis. I like to show you what I'm seeing on my charts, what I've been looking at, been doing this for 30 years. So I try to impart some of that knowledge on you. For some of you who are just starting out, wanting to get into technical technical analysis, we look at our charts, we look at our technical indicators, we look at moving averages, support and resistance levels, and I try to show you what I do when I'm ready to get into or out of a trade. One of the smartest thing smartest things you can do when you're when you're starting to look at charts is you want to look at the overall market the broad market, what's it doing as a whole? And that includes the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. Those are the three main indexes. So we track those first, and then we dial down to the individual stocks. So what we're seeing here on your screen is the SPY, it's the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500 index. We look at that first. For those of you that are new, I quickly go over what, I'm, what I have on my charts. I look at a daily bar chart, open, high, low, close is what they're called versus candlesticks. I don't look at candlesticks. These are each one of these lines is, is one day's worth of trading bar chart. I have three moving averages that I look at a 20 day, 50 day, 200 day, all simple moving averages. And down here is the RSI indicator, 14 day RSI indicator, overbought, oversold indicator fluctuates between zero and 100, never really gets to zero or 100. In most cases, these two horizontal lines are my overbought, oversold levels at the 20 and 80. You can move those to any uh, level you like. The default is 25.75. So I gauge this down here, see if a stock or index is overbought, oversold. And up here, I look for support and resistance levels. I draw these these charts in here, uh, these, these, these pictures, got W pattern, triangles, channels. This is all part of technical now. So these are things that, that help me gauge whether a stock is ready to move up or down. So we look at the overall market first. We look at the S&P 500. And what we've noticed that yesterday, so Thursday, December 23rd, was the final day of trading for this week. And we can see right here, let me open this up a little bit. So here's Thursday's trading, December 23rd, this bar right here. So as you can see, the S&P 500 is just getting ready to break all time new highs. Right here, we're getting all along this triple top here. One, two, three. Some people will call that a triple top. Sometimes that acts as a barrier or a resistance level where a stock or index can't get through. It might knock it back down. It's possible, but what I like is that we've, we've gone up and we, we're, we're ready to take out all time new highs. Here is the last all time new high right here. And this was back on November 22nd. If we get enough boost, enough oomph, this could push through and start on all-time new highs. Maybe it won't happen next week. You know, it's 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 a it's sort of a, a dull week, the last trading week of the year between Christmas and New Year's. Not a lot of activity. So this may have to wait until the new year starts where we get through this. But let's go back to the monthly chart. This is all time going back to 1993 or so. We can see. Just the market has just gone straight up. Let me pull it out a little bit here. So, you know, from 2008, 2009, when we had the financial meltdown, since then, last 13 years or so, we've just gone straight up. So this is the monthly chart. We concentrate on the daily chart. So this is where we are now. Getting ready to make all-time new highs. So you can sort of see maybe a little bit of a W pattern here. You can see it much bigger. W pattern, if you want to draw it in, possible. Also triple top here. So we've got a couple things going. The W pattern is typically a bullish pattern, but you got the triple top waiting above it. Got the resistance line here. So we may get a little bit of a pullback, but I think in the new year, once, you know, we're still dealing with COVID and Omicron, um, but we've got the vaccine. So that's not really a, an issue as far as the market goes. Inflation yet is on the yes is here. 
the, the U.S. Federal Reserve is, is going to be tackling that by raising interest rates. So the market already knows that that's going to happen. And if it hasn't really sold off too much yet, then I don't really see that happening in the future. I'm just waiting for this resistance to pop. And I think the market will continue on to more all-time new highs, maybe even in the first week of the new year. So market looks strong. Uh, you know, we had these two pullbacks of late. We had this pullback here, pullback here. Got people nervous about it. You know, I mean, if, if you look at in the entirety of where the market's gone, these little teeny pullbacks mean absolutely nothing. They're just a little blip. But you got a lot of short-term traders, a lot of people that buy up near the tops and they get scared out. They, they don't have the patience to hold and they sell out. We get these little pullbacks and that scares the market a little bit. And the reason how we know that the market gets scared is we look at the VIX. This is the VIX, daily chart of the VIX. The VIX is basically what's called the fear indicator. It's a measure of uh, implied volatilities of the front month S&P 500 options contracts. And when, when, when there's a downturn in the market, there's a lot of fear. People buy put options for, for protection. Buying put options protects you on a downside move. So when, there's, when the, the market starts to go down, this VIX indicator starts to go up. So you can see here, so this was right during the pandemic, March 2020, where the fear really ramped up in the market and the VIX spiked up. But since then, the market has been just going straight up since March 2020. So that meant the fear started to come down in the overall market. But you get these spikes. You can see these spikes along the way. And that's when the market has a little bit of a quick downturn. So we're, the last two downturns we had in the market just recently, you can see we had these kind of spikes here in the VIX. So people got scared. People always get scared when we have a little bit of a downturn. So we'll go back to the S&P 500. You can see here, let me open it up a little bit more. So this little down move here and this little down move here caused the VIX to spike, but it rallies right back up. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bull for the long term. The market goes up over time. Doesn't matter what's happening in the market, rising interest rates, pandemics, wars, you know, those things are short term scary, yes, but in the long run, the market is still a, a vehicle made up of profitable companies creating profitable products that people buy. And quarter after quarter, these companies make money. And the stock market has to go up over time as long as the market is made up of these profitable companies. OK, so, yes, we can get pullbacks. That's all part of the market. You get pullbacks, but it picks itself back up and goes up again. I'm in for the long haul, you know, decades. I buy S&P 500 funds, SPY, hold for a long term. Our short term trading here at the, at the Smart Option Seller is typically one to three months hold time. So it's a little shorter. It's actually a lot shorter than decades. So we have to be a little bit more precise with our with our trading when we get in and when we get out. So we really have to rely on our technical analysis skills and chart reading. And so we look at these patterns. You can see this channel here that was drawn. So it bounces along the channel. We try to get into a bullish play when it's coming along the bottom edge of the channel or when it's bouncing off a moving average line. Here we look for the channel. We waited for it to pop out of the channel. And so this is when we would get into a bullish trade right around here when it when it moves outside of the channel and gets above the 50 day moving average and starts to move up. So those are some things we look at when we're trying to decide when and or if to get into a trade or when to get out. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq. And that is represented by the QQQ Nasdaq, just like the S&P 500. Here was the last all time high back in November 22nd. On November 22nd, we had these two pullbacks. So the Nasdaq's got a little bit more to go until it hits this all time high here. And what, what can we glean from this? Well, it's hugging right along the 50 day moving average. It's a very popular at moving average is 50 day. A lot of people follow that. So when, when, when a stock is making a move along the 50 day, a lot of people will initiate the same kind of transaction. So if they see it bouncing, a lot of people are going to buy and that'll push the momentum. Stocks move on momentum. If they're going up, it will keep going up until something pushes it in the other direction. So you watch, you know, we, we drew this long channel here. So obviously you can see the NASDAQ's in a nice uptrend. It bounces off the top, comes down a little. It can either bounce off the 50-day moving average or the bottom edge. Right now, 
it bounced pretty good. Uh, you know, came down below the 50 day a little bit, but had a nice bounce. So just like the S&P 500, I can, I really, really see this thing going up, making all time new highs probably soon after the new year rolls around. So market looks good. Let's go to the Dow Jones. We use the diamonds, the DIA. This is the DIA, just like the QQQ and SPY. This tracks the the index. This tracks the Dow Jones index. This is the DIA. I don't have it written down here. Same thing. Pull back, pull back, bounce, bounce. This one bounced off the, this is the Mac Daddy. This is the 200 day moving average right here. Um, this is really like one of the last lines in the sand. You want to see, you want to see support hold and it held, it held here, held here. And when I mean held, you know, a couple days worth of trading, maybe a week, you know, it could bounce below it for a little bit, but typically it's not going to stay down below it for too long. So the Dow, here's the all-time new highs back here. So the Dow's got a little work to do as well, but I, I can only see it going higher from here. There's the, the, what, what would be there to stop it in the long run? Yeah, we got inflation, we got interest rates that are gonna be raised, but that that's only a temporary type of pullback that we may see at that time. It'll scare some people out, people that don't really know what moves the market. Long run, long run, the market will go up. So we like the market as a whole. Now when we look at some individual stocks, you have to be pretty careful because individual stocks will tend to follow the indexes, but they also move on their own because they have their own earnings. They have earnings announcements every every three months and you have to watch out for those. So you really have to pay more attention to the individual stocks. Let's take a look at Apple. We look at the, we look at the popular stocks here because that's what a lot of people trade. That's what they're interested in. So Apple has made all-time new highs pretty recently. This was back on December 13th right here, a little over $180 a share. So Apple has, you know, has been going up. The overall trend you can see is upwards, but it had a lot of ups and downs, ups and downs, channels, downwards, upwards, downwards. But you can see it's been hugging along the 20-day. The blue line is the 20-day moving average, and it bounced right here the other day. It bounced right on the 20-day moving average. Uh, Apple, I mean, we all know Apple, great company, great products. It, it's going to keep going. I mean, it has fits and starts, but in the long run, the, you know, people just keep buying, buying their products. Stock's gonna, stock has to go up. You know, as long as they keep putting out rising earnings quarter after quarter, the stock has nowhere to go but up. So take a longer term perspective. Apple will keep going up. It's, it's bullish. It's bouncing here. It's going to go uh, and make all time new highs, uh, I would say, in the very near future. Um, let's look at Tesla. We like to look at Tesla. Tesla is just a beast. You know, it's just a beast of a stock. It can be really scary and volatile um, to trade this thing. I mean, if you're trading Tesla intraday, my hat is off to you because uh, that's something that I cannot do. Uh, that's I could never trade short term like that. Couldn't trade intraday. I just it wasn't for me. So I go longer term. But I like to watch it because it's fun to watch because it makes massive moves. Uh, we've had channels drawn here, channels drawn here. Um, it just went ballistic here. It was super overbought for a short period of time. And then it came back down, made the triangle congestion pattern drop through it. Um, you know, here were some support lines. It's really hard to get a gauge on Tesla trying to draw support because it just moves all over the place. It's almost like technical analysis is, is re a really hard thing to do with Tesla. So that's why I don't trade it because it's just so erratic and so volatile. You can see all the lines that I've drawn on the chart that, you know, sometimes it may work for a couple of days, but then it just turns around and goes the other direction. So play at your own risk. It's fun to watch for sure. I like to sell some way out of the money put options on Tesla way, way down here, um, you know, down here. You can you can sell put options with these strike prices down here, make a little bit of money. Um, but that's the only way I would play it because it's too volatile for me. All right. So let's take a quick look at some other stocks. I want to show you Clorox because Clorox is a stock that we, we talk about almost every week here. Now, let's go back to the pandemic In the pandemic. Clorox was a was a darling. It was just going up massively. And then summer of. 2020 it started to come down into this 
downtrending channel. You can see the long blue lines. And then it had these little little uptrending channels along with the, 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 the big downtrend. You can have pullbacks and, and rallies within the channel. And, but it had been in the sideways channel for a number of months now. And I'd been saying that I, I needed to see Clark's trade between 175, 180 for me to sort of get a little bullish and maybe it's, it's, it's finally f finding its footing and getting ready to move to the bullish side. Had been in the sideways channel, has a downtrending 200 day moving or so here, right here, this little move these last couple days, it popped outside of the, the sideways channel, got above the 200 day moving average. So I nibbled a little bit. I bought around $175, $176 a share, bought a couple shares just to see what would happen, was hoping that it would continue on upwards and, and create a new trend. Well, you know, didn't work. So didn't work so well so far. Uh, it, it has come back down below the 200 day moving average and has come back down into the sideways channel. So this is where it ended right here, around $170 a share. So I'm currently underwater on the shares that I bought, but I'm hopeful that what we can see here is, you know, maybe we have the beginning of the ultimate beginning of the uptrend, the starting of a new long-term uptrend here, okay? So it maybe it found its footing finally, starting a new uptrend, got knocked back down, but I'm hoping here's the 20 day moving average. Here's the bottom edge of the channel. I'm hoping at this point it'll, it'll continue on upwards. So I'm, I'm moderately and hopefully bullish here due to the, the little breakout here. Got knocked back down, but it's sort of in this uptrending channel. So these are the things that I look for. I didn't go all in, you know, I start to nibble. When you see something starting to move and, and, and looking like it's, it's ready to make the next wave or next jump to whatever the, if you're, if you're bullish or bearish on a stock, then, you know, you nibble, you nibble a little bit, don't go all in. So I nibbled a little bit, bought a handful of shares waiting to see what will happen. So right now I'm underwater, but I'm hopeful that Clorox will, will start to move up. Let's take a look at some other stocks. Let's go to our list here and see what I've got. Let me move some stuff over here so I can get to my thing here. Okay, so here's my list. Let's see what some stocks we have. Um, Oracle was a stock that we played recently in the Smart Option Seller Newsletter. We sold some naked puts on Oracle. And the reason why I love Oracle was in this nice, has been in this nice uptrend right here, this huge gap up. See this air pocket right here? Earnings came out and, and, and Oracle just went off like a rocket. Went from $90 up to 105. And it has since pulled all the way back. It filled the gap, which is what we like to see on charts. What that means is when you have an air pocket like this, you wanna see the stock close the gap eventually. And, and the stocks come all the way down to its original breakout point. So it, it filled up this gap. That's what's called filling the gap. And it's right back down to right near $90 a share. I like Oracle. I'm glad it's come back down, gave us a chance to get in. So we sold some put options on Oracle. I like the stock long term. And uh, so we, we sold some put options, which is a bullishly oriented strategy. So that's Oracle. Let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, AMD. We love AMD. I love AMD. We also have sold some, we sold a put spread in our other newsletter, bullish trade as well. Love the bounce right here. I liked how AMD pulled back right to the 50 day moving average right here. So we got in right around here, right when it was bouncing off the you know $135 level. And so it bounced here and that was our cue to get into a trade. Wait for the pullback, wait for the bounce off the 50 day moving average. And this is when we got in. So it's working for us. It had bounce. Now it's around $146 a share. So we like that. Um, what else are we doing? Let me look at our stocks here on the list. Move this up here. So that's Oracle, AMD, Apple, Amazon. We look at still still stuck in the, in the long channel. So there's really nothing happening with Amazon. Let's look at Netflix because we do have a position on Netflix. We sold put option spread with these really high price stocks. We can sell put option spreads, bullish trades, 
and it and it locks in our maximum loss and we like to do that spreads are another way or a way to get into a trade if you have limited funds we sell put spreads so what we did is we got into Netflix when it was around $650 a share. We we're waiting for it came down here. We we're waiting for it to bounce. Thought it would track up higher, but it has since moved down. But the good thing about the way that we do it is we sell put spreads way out of the money. Gives us a lot of cushion. So this trade is actually making money for us, even though the stock's moving in the wrong direction. That's one thing I harp on when I teach my students is that by using out of the money options when you sell out of the money options it gives you a lot of cushion against directional error we're all going to be wrong at some point when we when we try to figure out which way a stock's going to move and if you are wrong on the the stock direction it doesn't mean that your option trade is going to lose because when when you sell out of the money put options that time decay will work in your favor if you understand what that means. So even though the stocks moved in the wrong direction for us, we're still making money on the option position because time decay is working in our favor. So that's Netflix. Let's see what other stocks we, we can look at here. Cisco was, you know, I missed the trade on Cisco back here. I wish I had gotten in. It's just rallied since. Cisco is, is, is getting up there, hoping for a pullback in Cisco. Procter & Gamble, just a strong stock. Uh, we don't have anything there. Let's look at Walmart. We like to talk about Walmart. Here's the line, the support line right here around $135 a share. I got in some shares here, nibbled. I was waiting to get in at $135 again here. Didn't come all the way down. Still have my order open to buy again at $135. Came down again to about $137.5. So it's kind of lingering between $135, 140 here. Um, it's got the support right at $135. We know Walmart's a great company could sell out of the money put options on Walmart. Um, those should work for you. Sell out of the money put spreads. I'm waiting to get into a trade here as well. If it gets back down to 135, I like to wait, see if it bounces, and then that's my cue to, to get in for some more. Uh, let's look at Disney real quick. Disney's a stock we've talked about. Nibble down here as well. Got way oversold. Here's the RSI. Got way, way oversold, even below my 20 uh, level. So that was my cue to, to nibble on some shares. It's rallied up a little, pulled back a little. It's kind of making the W pattern you can see here. So it may be a move above maybe 155, 156 could, could rally it to, this, to the downtrending 50-day moving average. If it gets through that, it should continue to go. You know, this is a great company. It's not going out of business. Buying down here probably could be a pretty good thing if you, if you want to nibble on some Disney but I have to believe the, the bottom may have been found here and it could either trade sideways or, or continue to slowly move up. But I, I, I like Disney here. You know, just know that none of these are the actual recommendations. These are just things that I'm seeing, things that we're doing in our newsletter. But, you know, buying Disney here is probably a safe bet because of the, the support that it's got probably trying to find itself a bottom here. So Disney is something that we like. What other stocks can we look at here? Look to Tesla. So the pharmaceuticals uh, are mostly going higher. Eli Lilly, Bristol Myers, Pfizer. Now we have a position in Merck as well. Uh, another put option that we sold. Now here's another case where the stock moved against us. Now the Merck is surprising to me because all the others are have been strong, but Merck's just been kind of languishing. We got in around, I don't know, somewhere up here, so puts, but the position is still making money even though the stock's moved against us. Hoping to, it's finding some congestion here, hoping that it's just going to rally back up in the near term so we can close out of our positions. Um, Kellogg, stuck in the middle of the range. Verizon, oh, let's talk about Verizon because we've talked about Verizon a long time. I love Verizon, but I said it's not time to get in yet because it's just been in this downtrend for so long. But something happened last week, had this massive move higher, just just rallied a good couple dollars. So are, is, is Verizon out of the woods yet? Yet to be seen here. Let's, let's redraw this line right here and draw in a new, so we can kind of connect some of the tops here. So now it's sort of at the top edge of the new line here. And... If it gets above this, somewhere between you know $53, $54 a share, 
maybe Verizon's ready to, to finally make that turn um, to the upside to, to, to try to, you know, get back to some of these levels up here, low 60s. Um, same thing with at and It seems like at and Verizon sort of had the same idea last week, had a decent, massive rally. So maybe the, maybe the telecoms are f finally found a bottom. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I want to get into Verizon, but had to wait for the downtrend to stop. Are we out of the woods? I don't know. We've got this, this upper channel here just kind of waiting above. Maybe it, it might knock it all the way back down again. Not sure yet. Need to see it trade outside of and above this downtrending line before I feel a little bit more confident. So I'm in a wait and see mode for Verizon. Let's see what else we have. Let's go down through the list. Uh, PayPal, PayPal. I, I, I am starting to get a little anxious, uh, um, excited about PayPal, starting to make some sideways action. When you see sideways action, that kind of means that the stock has been finding its footing after a down move, or if it had been on an up move and went sideways, it, it's deciding what the next move should be. So PayPal has been in this downtrend for a while now. But the sideways action is telling me that maybe it's finally found some equilibrium, maybe found its footing here. So, um, you know, it bounced off the, it got oversold here, and it's just barely above the 20 day moving average. So let's keep an eye, I'm keeping an eye on PayPal. This could be, could be the bottom here, and maybe it'll start to go back up. Square, same category. I love the payment sector. The online payment sector, PayPal and Square, the two biggies here. Square um, doesn't look as strong or as bottoming as PayPal does. If I had to be choose between the two right now, I'd probably pick PayPal. Square still kind of looks like it, it. It's trying to find its trying to find its footing here. It hasn't really done it yet. Could be a little more downside. I like PayPal better as far as making more of a bottom. Um, so keep an eye on both of these. Uh, Coca-Cola is another one that I personally have bought some shares in of late. Bought some down here. Um, where did I get into? In the low 50s, I think, when it was trading underneath the 200-day the moving average and then popped back up. So Coca-Cola hanging up here, looking pretty good here. Let's go back to the monthly, see where if Coke is. Yep, Coke is... Hit all-time new highs back in early 2020, just before the meltdown for the pandemic. So almost ready to take out all-time new highs for Coke. Pepsi. Talked about Pepsi in one of our other synopsis here. I like I like how Pepsi's just kind of stair-stepping its way higher, hugging along the 20-day or the 50-day moving average. Pepsi looks bullish. It's got nice a nice uptrending move. It's hugging along the moving averages. The moving averages are upsloping as well, so that's a good sign. You want the moving averages upsloping if you're bullish. So Pepsi looks good. Um, what else do we got in here? What others? Google is Google could be ready to go as well. Make getting ready to make more all-time new highs. Google just keeps going up. Can't hold Google back. Um, we got the the Bitcoin stocks. We talked about Riot hanging along, right along that $25 level. Marathon Digital, another Bitcoin stock. We talked about that. It's it, it's more of an uptrend than than uh, Riot is. Trying to find its footing. Let's open this up here. Trying to find its footing right at the 200-day moving average. If Bitcoin starts to go back up, which it has in the last couple of days. Um, Mar should keep going up as well. And let's look at one or two more. Peloton still getting hit to the downside. I know people are trying to pick bottoms. People email me, Lee, is it time to get into Peloton? Should I start buying here? Um, it's come down a long way. I mean, it's got hit pretty hard. It's $165, $170 on the high here, all the way down to under $40. That's, that's a big haircut. Is it finding support? What I do like about Peloton, if I had to, if I'm doing my synopsis here, when you see the stock price moving down, but the RSI moving up, that's what's called divergence, bullish divergence. So even though the stock is selling off a little bit more each day, 
the RSI is moving up, meaning the, 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 the pace of the selling has been slowing down. There's less sellers out there than there was prior. So Peloton could be starting to maybe finally find the bottom of the selling. RSI moving up. So this is the divergence that you would want to see if you're if you're thinking about getting long Peloton. This is a good sign. This upwards motion in in the RSI. So I don't think Peloton is going to drop a lot more. It may linger down here a little bit more, but but the but the down moves should should be subsided at this point. So maybe nibbling down here could work until until you see a confirmed uptrend begin. But this is a good sign for those Peloton bulls out there. Um, let's take a look, maybe one or two others. eBay, we also have a position in eBay. We had, we had um, sold some put options when it was bouncing off the bottom of the channel, but it has since moved down. But our position, the put options that we sold are making money because time decay is working in our favor, which is a good thing. So even though the stock's moving against our preferred movement, the option position is making money. That's why we concentrate on out of the money, selling out of the money strikes when we concentrate on our put options and put option spreads that we sell. All right. So that pretty much does it here for this synopsis. Let's one more time open up the SPY overall market. Looks strong. I know it's going to blast through this this resistance at some point. It may get knocked back back down in the next week, maybe just because slow week. Not a lot of players out there, but you can't hold it back for too long. It's going to blast through this this line at some point and move to more all time new highs. All right, so that's it for the Saturday synopsis. Let's quickly go to our website, SmartOptionSeller.com. If you want to learn more about put option selling, what we do here at Smart Option Seller, go to our put selling basics link right here at the top or, or along the heading here. Scroll down, put your name and email address. Um, at, this is at the bottom of the page. We'll send you a free copy. Learn about put selling. Our services here, we have two newsletters. We got a naked put selling service. We sell also sell put option spreads. And we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you get up to speed if you need a little help. All right, so that's it. That's it for the Christmas Saturday Synopsis Edition on the Friday. Um, if you like this video, if you think this has been some decent information, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. I always answer your, your, your comments here. Uh, send me an email, too, if you if you like. I try to help you out there as well. All right, so that's all for me. Um, I'm wishing everyone happy holidays. Not sure if we'll have a... A synopsis next Saturday. It is New Year's Day. Um, it will be New Year's Day then. So not sure if I'm going to do one or not, but I will be back in the new year. That's for sure. Coming back to you with some new educational videos and these syn Saturday synopsis videos. All right. So that's all for me today. Wishing everyone happy holidays. This is Lee Lowell signing off.